All right, guys. I'm kind of got to get back to the Friday updates. Not that we've done a whole lot this week, but things will pick up here. Um, as you can see, I have buffing compound, polishing compound, glaze compound, the applicators to do the glaze by hand. I bought a bunch of fine line tape. I'll talk about this later to do the hood when we're ready for it. And I bought masking tape. The masking tape is mainly for my wife's car. I'm going to buff her car. Um, I'm actually probably going to do that over by the shop. I'm going to do this here. Uh, I didn't want to move both cars out for her car because her car is black. So I need a little bit more space for better lighting. I don't feel like doing all that. So I asked my boss if I could do it by the shop. I'm going to do her car there. I'm going to do this here. And I'll do videos as I do this uh, tomorrow. So I bought... Uh, the thermal cut from Wizards, this stuff is awesome. It's actually like 25 bucks for this quart. I think it's just about a quart. Uh, 32 fluid ounces to quart. That's a really good price. And the finish cut. Uh, so, uh, you know, use that with the foam pad. And, uh, you know, so it should clean things up pretty good. And, uh... I borrowed my buddy's buffer. He's got this killer S buffer, which is like a dual action high speed buffer that is the bee's knees according to him. So he let me borrow it. I was going to borrow his Makita. I'm used to the regular single rotary style buffer, but I borrowed that. And um, so that's what we can do tomorrow. Uh, update on the small block Ford. The powers that be, and by that I mean like I got really cool friends who kind of intervene when they see something that, so even though by a lot of digging and information, a thou and a half is good on the mains and JJ, who you guys have seen, he said, man, that's still too tight for my liking. And it is tighter for my liking as well. Um, his cousin, I believe his cousin happens to be a hardcore Ford guy. And he asked him and he said, you're better off being between two to two and a half two and a half being probably ideal, I believe. And so big thanks to him for, uh, you know, JJ asked him, I believe. And, and uh, really, um, when you got good friends in your corner, they really won't let you fail. So I got to thank JJ for uh, reaching out to me. Uh, I promise JJ, I'm not being hard headed. I just, you know, I know what I got to do with this, but you know what? The bearings are like 90 bucks to add an extra of clearance and it'll put us right there so I'm just gonna tell my buddy that's what needs to happen to make it right because in my mind it's tight it shouldn't be that tight um, and so we're you know the rods are good just the, the main clearances are a little tight so we're gonna go with um, what what has been suggested and what we thought in our minds is that uh, we should be a little bit looser than that so we're gonna do that and again, big, big thanks to JJ for chiming in on that. You know, he watches the videos and he, he you know, he usually comments on something. And uh, so as you guys can see here, I got some stripes laid out. And this is very crude. Like there is, first of all, what I would do in this situation is this hood isn't perfectly flat. So what I would do to lay down flat because you see, I'm trying to follow the contour of the hood with these stripes and it just doesn't work. So what I would do is I actually would lay down a piece of three quarter inch tape to leave a flat line. I could do it in this fine line as well, but it's too thin. And I would end up leaving a fine straight line to use for reference. And once I'm done, you remove that and your lines are going to be straight regardless of this line because... Eyeball wise, you laid down a, a straight line for reference. I just did this fucking around and this is kind of what I got in mind. We're gonna have a couple of different things going on in the side of the scoop, which I really wanna catch people's attention with the side of the scoop. I love the trunk. People have given me a lot of positive feedback on the trunk and I kind of wanna go all out on the hood, but not do the whole hood, keep it limited. We're just gonna do the sides the tops and I might do something on the inside of the, the sidewalls of the scoops here. So, and it's going to be something that I can do something funny with, you know, um, you know, like on one side I'll put bump and on one side I'll put line because 
my buddy said this is this hood is like the Charlie Sheen hood. It looks like it's got a cocaine problem. So again, little jokes like that I try to tie in. I wouldn't do anything else besides bump and line, and people would probably be asking themselves, what the fuck's that all about? But I would know what it's about, so it's little jokes like that. But the main thing is gonna be um, the top of the scoops, the side of the scoops. I don't know what my buddy's availability is gonna be, so chances are this might take me a while to lay out because when me and my friend did the trunk, we really bounced ideas off of each other, and we both took tape, and we both laid down stuff, and we both moved each other's lines around until we were both really happy. And my wife will show you guys in the back what that looks like if you guys haven't seen that in a while. Um, you know, it took us about six hours. Well, the grunt of the work was probably in the center. And it was getting all of these little, this thing's dirty, but it was all about getting these little lines just right going into each other. The diamonds, the little, there's a lot of little things going on in that center section that if you don't actually look at it, you'll miss it. And, you know, we, we did our little thing on it. Like, we both debated on how to end the lines here. And we left a natural pinstripe around the trunk opening. And, um, you know, the, the big panels were obviously easy. This was a stencil plate and this was the lace work. So we are going to do some lace work on the top of the hood. But it's going to be used as a main inlay versus a part of the panel. So what I'm going to end up doing is... Um, this isn't going to be this color on the side. I'm going to lay my stripe down and then I'm going to do one big main white panel on both sides. And then on the top, I'm going to do a white panel with the lace pattern right over the top. And then we're going to lay panels over that lace so that um, our striping and our other things are actually going to be laced once they're all taped off. So I'm going a little different there. And um, it's going to have to be planned out. And I really hope to uh, set up the GoPro for that. I did it when I did the intake and it worked out really good. So uh, again, I'm probably gonna end up spraying most of that on the car because I got enough room to mask it off. It's not, again, spraying this on the car isn't ideal, but I don't have room to do a work stand. So I'm gonna do the main painting on the car and then when it's ready to clear I'm gonna pop it off and take it by the shop and probably clear it or pop it off roll one of the cars out because I have the hood has to come off anyway to remove the engine so I may actually just roll the car out on second thought and just mask off the bottom of it. but um, you know lay like set up the camera and you guys can see what I'm doing as I'm laying it down and whatnot but um, this is actually something I've really been putting off and but actually been really looking forward to and uh, I can't wait to buff the car. It's it's starting to show its age. Uh, we only buffed it once, and the, we used economy paint, so it's really shrunk down. And there's nothing wrong with economy paint, but it you know sometimes we use the Omni base coat on here, and it had we had like literally ten to twelve coats of color just to get the color right. It was so transparent. It took like ten to twelve coats, and then you know we gave it like. A half hour to flash off and then we did the clear but no matter what you trap the solvents and what happens is as those solvents come out everything settles into that old paint so this paint looks really thin despite the fact that we got three good coats clear on it so it's time to bring that depth back and I'm gonna clean it I got to do a bird bath on this thing um, so tomorrow morning I'm gonna wake up early come out here with a spray bottle and a little soap and just wipe the car down and then clay bar it. I bought clay bars as well. One for my, there's two in here. So I'm going to use one for my car, one for my wife's car. And uh, uh, by the way, clay bars are cheap. Don't reuse them. Just once you're done, chuck them. Um, they have a way of collecting shit. So in my experience, clay bar, I paid 12 bucks for this fucking thing. So, um, but that's what I'm going to be doing. And uh, so... Yeah, that's the kind of the concept I got going on. Obviously, in here, I'm gonna use finer line tape. I bought some really thin eighth inch fine line for this. So like the main pinstriping around the panels is gonna be um, quarter and the smaller stuff, maybe not this particular panel, this panel, like I plan on having something like this is gonna be like quarter, but uh, for the endless lines, it's gonna be eighth, um, for, I kind of want to do like a diamond pattern here. It's going to end up being uh, eighth versus quarter. 
and then you know we'll use different size tape as we see fit so either way guys I hope you guys like what uh, I got coming up it's a little bit different versus restoring and engine shit but this is gonna get done soon so stay tuned share like subscribe that's our Friday update hit the like button hit the fucking subscribe button share watch it with your dog eat a bucket of fried chicken it's Friday have a beer see you